which characters are right for you in Grand Blue Fantasy Relink. There's over 18 characters available to play, each with their own unique mechanics that make them a blast to play individually, so you want to make sure that you are investing the right time into the one that fits your style. So, let's go through each character and give you a general overview of what they are all about. By the end of this video, you will hopefully have an understanding of what the character does, and then let us know which ones you are going to recruit for your team, as there are some pretty cool ones that weren't available in the PlayStation demo. If you're looking for a more lordly character that wields a sword and magic, then Percival might be the one for you. This Lord of Flames outputs insane damage, but does require more thoughtful consideration to combat and positioning than other characters, due to the use of his unique attack. Percival's unique mechanic revolves around his unique attack called Schlacht. This is a devastating attack that hits multiple times with various levels of charge and can even be upgraded to become a parry if timed correctly on incoming attacks. Percival's skills really do pack a punch with the majority being focused on damage dealing, but he does have other skills that offer support and gap closers that both buff and debuff. All of his skills, as well as his combo finishers, will work in conjunction with Schlacht. This is because any time his sword is imbued with fire, it will cause Schlacht to charge even faster. So if you want to play a flame-wielding knight that's looking to create his own ideal country, then Percival is your ideal pick. Next is an elegant little lady for those of you that love mages, and she does pack a punch. Eo is a traditional mage with long-ranged magic and different elemental spell attacks that deal a large amount of damage and various debuffs. The trick with her is to gain her mystic vortex orbs, which the more you have of them, the higher you can then charge her unique attack. You can easily gain these orbs by charging your basic attacks, using skills, and participating in link attacks. If you unlock the quick cast support skill from her mastery tree, you'll be able to charge your unique attack even faster, as every time you gain a vortex orb, you will have a boosted charge time for stargaze. From the demo, we've already seen that Eo is a popular character with her ability to both deal massive damage and crowd control enemies with status effects. For our next character, does grenades, sniping, and laser beams sound good to you? If so, you may want to take a look at Eugen. As one of the oldest Skyfarers, Eugen knows how to lay down damage with both close range hand-to-hand -hand combat, but also range sniping. When playing Eugen, you need to make the choice of remaining mobile or entering into your sniper mode. Sniper vision will put you into a manual aiming mode, allowing you to pick your shots, which is great for aiming at certain body parts if you want to break them. And when combined with the grenades, this can deal a high amount of stun damage, making him a great part breaker. His nades are awesome as you can throw them near enemies and onto enemies enemies to deal damage to everything in its blast radius. While most of his skills are focused on damage dealing at ranged, he does have a bunch of status inflicting skills and even a healing bullet, so he is very versatile. Our next character is the power incarnation of the primal beast Rose Queen, who's a mix of support and mid-range damage dealing. Rosetta is a great asset to any team and is able to plant roses across the battlefield with her unique attack that not only aid her in combat but also offer some awesome team-wide support buffs that will be useful in the game's tougher content. She's all about planting roses in the right location to deal the most damage, while also being able to give coverage to the team in terms of buffs. Each rose that you plant will grow in effectiveness when hitting enemies, which also increases their radius, but they will wither away if they aren't planted in range of an enemy. Rosetta's skills mainly focus on juggling the position of her plants with various different support skills, and even the option to inflict poison on enemies. When using her, you will need to be very mindful of your combat combos, as each different combo you do will yield a different buff to your teammates inside the radius of your roses. All in all, this makes her a good, well-rounded summoner and a great choice if you like supporting and damage dealing. With the blood of a dragon flowing through his veins, Siegfried wields a big greatsword for some powerful chops and slashes. He's a great sustainable damage dealer, while being able to dish out consistent high single target damage, but also is fairly tanky thanks to his variety of self and team-wide buffs. You'll need to maintain focus while comboing your enemies down, as Siegfried relies on timed inputs right after connecting each hit of his combo, but if you execute this perfectly, you can then use a massive finisher called Perfect Execution. To help him stay alive and keep your combos going, you can also sprinkle in dodges or link attacks which will not interrupt your combo string, letting you maintain on the offense even during enemy attacks. 
Siegfried has a range of skills that focus on self or party wide buffs, with some buffing up his own attack and defense, or other skills like Mirage giving the whole team a massive 70% defense buff. This is great for difficult boss phases or AoE attacks, and if you're feeling risky, his Draconic Release skill offers increasing attack buffs on perfectly timed attacks, but will completely end if you mistime a single one. It's not all about buffs as he has range shock waves, gap closers, and our personal favorite, a counter and parry. With all of this combined, Siegfried is a great all-rounder melee character with strong sustain and high single target damage, making him a great pick if you like skillfully timed, big, meaty chops. Next is Narmea, a fan favorite, but one of the more technical characters in the game. She's a blade master that has created her own unique style and has two different battle stances that you can use. The Dawnfly stance is for more wide reaching attacks that is damage focused. Meanwhile, the Free Flutter stance is a fast single target focused stance. Within both of these stances, you will need to master your combos to get the most bang for your buck out of her. Executing perfectly timed combos will reward you with faster charge times, as well as shifting between stances and using charge combos after skills. She can be a complete powerhouse in the right hands as you will need to make use of gathering her maximum butterflies to make her skills as enhanced as possible. Most of her skills are focused on damage dealing, while the other half will aid you in your resource management of the butterflies, letting you get straight back into the action. The best players with Narmea will be hitting perfectly timed Dawnfly combos and perfectly switching into Free Flutter, as is needed based on the situation at hand, and then using skills when the butterflies are maxed out. So if you like the look of Narmea and her complex but cool style, then this is something you should definitely give a go as it is a ton of fun. Basaraga is the Grim Reaper of Relink, building his massive scythe weapon known as the Great Scythe Grinoth. He is a slow but incredibly powerful tank. His mechanic is all about filling the Grinoth gauge, which will grant buffs such as Stout Heart, Attack, and Defense, depending on how high you get the level of the gauge. To fill this, you will have to use his unique attack, which can grant him Stout Heart at the press of a button, or be held down during combos for huge damage. Vasaraga's skills are split into different categories. First are the tank and support skills, which will have him buffing himself up to take aggro or damage away from other party members. Then you have his self buffs, such as Immortal Pain, which boosts attack and stops him from going into critical condition. And lastly, his damaging skills that can also be chained into charged attacks, giving him ways to very quickly fill his gauge. If you're looking for an unkillable tanky Grim Reaper, then Vasaraga is the pick. Next is a young ghost who accidentally summoned the primal beast of death and is all about juggling her ghostly pets for insane sustained quick hitting damage, but this isn't everything up her sleeve as she's also able to get access to some awesome self buffs. This is fairy and with each press and hold of her basic attack, you lead into a combo that will summon a new pet at each button press and hold. And then you have her unique attack which will consume all of her active pets to allow for additional damage based on how many pets were on the battlefield. Her skills will aid her in juggling how many pets are out at one time, with some of them instantly summoning all three pets, while also giving additional benefits to her, such as her support skills that scale more buffs depending on the amount of pets that are out. The best players will be using her unique ability to deal damage very quickly, while also comboing her skills to replenish her pets instantly. Another awesome feature is that on link attacks she will summon all three pets as well as during her SBA, making her a really spicy character to play with. So you should pick Fairy if you want a super quick hitting summoner with a ton of buffs and excellent damage. But next up, are you ready to be a frontline character? Well, this cheerful vice captain of the Order of the White Dragons has you covered with his tanky but very fun playstyle. Vayne has a unique mechanic whereby you will fill up his beatdown gauge, which allows you to not only unleash crazy heavy hitting combos but also block incoming attacks meaning that you can stand in the face of danger while laughing at them like a boss and dealing damage. You can fill Vayne's beatdown gauge by doing short combo finishers and then use his unique attack button to do additional combos that vary based on how full the beatdown gauge is. Vayne also shines with his skills as he has access to one of the best support skills in the game that grants a bubble of invincibility to himself and any party members if inside of it, which 
means other characters with super long build up attacks such as EO can make use of this invulnerability bubble to get a fully massive charged attack off. He also has access to a load of buffs and even a massive cleave that scales in damage based off of how full his SBA gauge is. Then we have Cagliostro. This is a close range caster that claims to be the founder of alchemy in the Relink universe. They work similar to Percival in that they're able to charge their unique attack quicker after a combo finisher. The awesome thing about Cagliostro and something that skilled players will use is that she has the ability to change what type of combo finisher is produced by using different lengths of combo strings. Three taps of a basic attack and then a combo finisher will use an awesome chainsaw, while combo strings that use two or four inputs will have a different move. Cagliostro is definitely a support character alongside being a caster, as her kit has some of the most awesome supportive skills, including a revive, a heal, buffs for your team, and stripping buffs from enemies. So you should definitely pick Cagliostro as part of your party if you need an amazing support character. Next is this renowned swordsman who is the king of counters in Relay as his skills with two swords allow him to move at super speed while also pulling off lightning fast combos and counters. Yadara has some really cool and unique mechanics, with the first thing being that he can chain into another combo right after his combo finisher, and if you do this repeatedly, you can make the combo shorter and shorter until you're chaining a single button press into a finisher indefinitely. This is great for two reasons, as it allows you to quickly build up his triple shroud marks each combo finisher you execute, and when he has three three of these marks he will enhance his skills. His skills focus on countering, dealing damage in cool ways, and there's a few that will buff the team based on the three marks being filled. If this wasn't enough, his combo finishers also have an invincibility window in them, meaning you can just keep attacking in enemies' faces. So if you want to float like a butterfly and sting like a bee, then this character is probably for you. Next, have you ever wanted to summon a primal beast to fight alongside you while wielding some awesome water magic and a sword? If so, Catalina is one you should have your eye on as she is a jack of all trades, being able to deal damage, cast magic from a range, and buff her teammates. Catalina's mechanics allow her to build the Ares gauge, which once filled will cause the primal beast Ares to enhance her skills and attacks. Her skills offer a lot of utility, with them being able to grant team-wide buffs that heal or make the whole team invincible. Alongside that is the fact that she can freeze enemies and dish out damage, making her a worthwhile pick for any team. Next up is Rackham, the helmsman of the Grand Cypher, and thus he has the right tools for the job. And in this case, that means having two different types of guns, one for more close range and one for more long range, so he can fire out a wall of bullets at enemies. As a ranged gunner, Rackham will need to account for two different things. This is the distance he is from enemies, and what part he is aiming at to maximize his damage. Standing in the distant sweet spot while targeting an enemy's weak point will net you the most damage with Rackham. His unique mechanic has him juggling his heat gauge, and this allows him to spend the heat in the gauge to reduce his charge time. It also increases his damage and distance of his unique attack, so you want to keep on top of that gauge. When you combine this with a lot of his skills being very heavily damage focused, he really is a powerhouse of the ranged archetype. Get ready to let out a stream of bullets with Rackham if you have him as part of your crew. And then we have Gran or Jita, the main character, and someone that you may overlook, but this jack of all trades character is a super tanky and support powerhouse that can carry a team to victory. Gran or Jita's unique mechanic is the arts level. This is raised by using combo finishers or doing a charged unique attack. The higher this level is, the more powerful Gran's skills get, and the cool thing about Gran is that he has a lot of different skills to pick from. There are skills that heal, revive, debuff, buff, and deal damage, so the choice is yours on how to build him, or her if you pick Jita. With skills like Phalanx and Substitute, you can greatly decrease the damage your team takes, and this allows Gran or Jita to build into one of the better tanks in the game, so this might be something you want to do later down the road. But next we have this second member of the Order of the White Dragons, and one of the more flashy looking characters. This king of the water element is all about speed and dodges, as well as a relentless barrage of offensive attacks. If you choose to play as Lancelot, you will need to know your enemy, as your main damage dealing attack is very stationary, but you can easily react to incoming attacks by using his unique dodge called Twin Blade Dance. This allows him to continue doing his combo barrage and reposition yourself. 
Keeping up this damage is important because after dealing enough damage, you will coat his blades in ice, letting you deal even more damage and execute an enhanced finisher. His skills are mostly damage focused, but he does have some utility, allowing him to self buff and freeze enemies. Essentially, if being the king of the twin blades sounds good to you, then Lancelot should be first in line for your crew. Next up we have Charlotta and while her looks may trick some people because she's very small, she's an absolute beast when it comes to damage output. She has an inbuilt counter on her unique attack that lets her either close gaps with enemies or deal big damage. Using Charlotta in combat does require you to deal rapid attacks while not getting hit to build up her sword's damage which will glow once you have done enough hits. This theme carries over into her skills where she's able to buff herself up and increase her damage the longer that you don't get hit otherwise it will be removed. This isn't too much of a problem for her though because of her built encounter, as well as a skill that gives yourself invincibility for a while. That coupled with her kit being basically fully damage focused with gap closing skills means that enemies will be screaming to get away from her as you just stick to them. Next we have a character whose mentality is that everything can be achieved through the might of the fist and eternal rage style. It's Gander Goza, the founder of this eternal rage style. This character is one of the most heavy hitting single hit characters in the game and the way this is done is through his unique mechanic which has you building up eternal rage by hitting enemies by performing well timed attacks by pressing your attack button as the attack lands which will yield you more charge allowing you to hit his ultra powerful charged unique attack. Hitting perfectly timed attacks is easier said than done though, but luckily there are skills that will have you boost or instantly fill his gauge, giving you instant access to this hard hitting move. His other skills are also extremely useful though, with things like Lion Stance giving him increased aggro and a 100% buff to attack, which on a heavy hitting character such as Gander Goza is absolutely massive. He has team buffs and self buffs, so he's also useful in your team. Basically pick Gander Goza if you want to punch your way to victory. Next up is Zeta, a character armed with the seal weapon Spear of a Vess. Zeta is a fearless fighter that requires perfect timing and positioning in order to get the most out of her. Her unique mechanic sends her flying into the air after landing a basic attack combo, and while in the air, you have to time your presses on hit so that you can loop your aerial combo up to three times, which will increase her damage with each successive hit, as well as boosting her stun and allow her to do a powerful finisher. Her unique attack on the ground is also an amazing counter that will grant you a jump into the air to go straight into your combo. And again by doing three of these loops you can then do her a vest hammer, which if upgraded will apply her unique debuff on enemies, that essentially acts as a status causing you to deal even more damage with your attacks to that monster. Zeta has a good split of skills that aid her into getting back into the air to execute her combo, as well as various options that support the party. If you feel like you want to have a godly time jumping around and completing aerial combo attacks, then you should consider racking up damage with Zeta. Next up we have a big spoiler warning, stop watching here if you do not want the next character spoiled for you, this is unlocked a lot later in the game, so this is your spoiler warning, do not watch past this point if you don't want a potential spoiler character. Well if you are still watching, next we have the foe turned friend Id, who is a awesome surprise as he not only looks cool, but has one of the craziest movesets in all of the game. Id's unique mechanic is the Phasalis Gauge, which when full allows him to enter into dragon form, giving him new moves and enhanced attacks. It doesn't stop here though, because if you've unlocked god form in the mastery tree, then you will be able to enter the form by filling the four sections of the outer part of the gauge. God form takes Id to the next level temporarily, with a combo finishing attack that is god tier, and while in this state, he has boosted attack and is immune to debuffs. You can fill his gauge by using skills and landing unique attacks, and skills will speed up the charge of your unique attacks. Id is a very impressive damage focused character, with 6 out of the 8 skills being focused on earning him meter, and his other ones being utility skills for enemy debuffs. So if you like the idea of big chops and dragon attacks, then Id is your go to. We're gonna have way more Granblue Fantasy Relink coming your way soon on the channel, so make sure you're subscribed down below.